You're listening to The Ashley Lachlan Show. I'm Ashley, and I'm here to help you build a wildly successful and profitable business on social media. I created my own rags to riches story and built a seven figure business on social media in the midst of motherhood. And my passion is helping other female entrepreneurs do the same. I'm sharing my best marketing, mindset, and sales strategies to help you love the process and scale your business to six figures and beyond. Let's dive in. Hello and welcome to today's episode where we are going to be talking about lessons from the cereal aisle. No, I'm not talking about sugar or fiber or anything health related. We're going to be talking about psychology and sales, you know, my favorite things. But I just thought of this as I'm recording. There is another podcast that I love listening to. It's The Law of Attraction Changed My Life. And she has this beautiful British accent, but is so funny. And she begins every podcast episode with, what up, bitches? Or something along those lines. And it is so funny and it makes me so happy. So I really need to come up with my own little welcome message for you guys. So if you have any ideas, you know, let me know. And I do want to remind you that I have a free Facebook community for female entrepreneurs. We talk sales, mindset, marketing, all the good stuff. So if you haven't joined yet, the link is going to be in the notes and description of this episode. It's called the Social Soiree. So hop in there so that you can network, see the live trainings that I do, and all that good stuff. But let's dive into the meat of this episode where I'm going to be walking you through the three main lessons we can learn from the cereal aisle. So number one, the cereal aisle proves that you do not need to worry about market saturation or competition. If you walk down the cereal aisle in any grocery store, this is in the U.S., It is very overwhelming. There are so, so many different cereals to choose from. And I hear this a lot. People will say, I want to create such and such, but so many other people are doing it. Or I want to sell such and such, but so many other people are selling it. And this happens a lot in network marketing. You might stumble upon a company and you might think, oh, I really want to join this company and I want to be a part of it. I I like the, the business opportunity to make money. And then all of a sudden you see everyone and their mother selling that same shake or program or shampoo or face cream. And you're like, WTF, where did all these people come from? Why everybody is selling it? I have zero chance of selling it. If you are trying to create your own course or online offer and you start to use certain hashtags and then Instagram starts showing you competitors, showing you people who are already doing that and selling something similar and you're like, what the F? I came up with this idea. How how did these people get this idea first? Or why should I even bother if there's already so-and-so who has a much bigger following selling what I want to sell? And this happens all the time in our lives. Say you are looking for a certain pair of yoga pants. And now all of a sudden, you're seeing these yoga pants everywhere. And you're like, wait a second. Is this a conspiracy? Is Facebook actually listening to me? Because now they're showing me ads for these pants. Or, you know, the famous example is you buy a red car and you think, oh, I'm going to really stand out. And then you see red cars everywhere. But this is actually called the Bader-Meinhof phenomenon or the frequency illusion. And there are two reasons for this. So first is selective attention. Your brain is subconsciously seeking out more information on the thing that you have been giving attention to. And then as your brain sees all of this information that it's intentionally or subconsciously seeking, it's then proof and confirming that yes, all of these things are out there. Yes, this is popular. For example, say you're thinking of creating an offer on manifesting. You have been working on manifesting. You're really passionate about manifesting. And you're like, I really want to create something on manifesting. Now, all of a sudden, you start seeing on Instagram other posts from people on manifesting. You go to Panera and the table next to you, people are talking about manifesting. And you're like, I'm late to the party. Everybody's already talking about this. 
But in reality, your brain is choosing to pick up on these things because you've been giving it attention and your brain is ignoring the other conversations that are happening at Panera. Your brain is ignoring the other posts on Instagram on that explore page. So if you're thinking of joining a business or selling your own offer, do not let what you are seeing, what your brain is perceiving and pointing out to you, hold you back. Because the cereal aisle shows us that there is no such thing as market saturation. Do you think that Cocoa Krispies is worried about Cocoa Puffs? Do you think that Fruit Loops is worried about Fruity Pebbles? No. There are a million cereals in the cereal aisle, something different for everyone. Because some people are going to go into the cereal aisle and they're going to want the sugary fun cereal. Some people are going to go into the cereal aisle and they're going to be backed up and they're going to be looking for the raisin bran. Some people are going to be all granola-ish and healthy and they're going to choose the granola or the... I don't even know what the the not good cereals are because I don't I don't eat them. I'm all about the Lucky Charms. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. But my point is, people have different tastes and preferences. So just because there are two cereals based in cocoa, one person is going to prefer cocoa puffs, while the other person is going to prefer cocoa krispies. So if someone is selling or doing what you want to do, think of that. Somebody is going to prefer you over your competitor. And this is why it's really important to let your personality shine through. And I think this is so important. You have to remember that you are the brand. You are the niche. And this is really important if you're selling something in network marketing where hundreds of thousands of people are selling that same product. Or you're a coach. You have an online course and there are other competitors selling something very similar on the same topic. The reason people buy from you is not because of the topic of your offer alone. It's not because of the product alone. They could easily go on Amazon if it's a product and buy it, or they could go to anyone and and buy that offer, that course, you know, coaching package. But they're buying from you. You are the brand and they want to work with you. They want to be in your world. They want to experience you. So you have to be really intentional about letting who you are, not just what you do, shine through because that's what's going to attract people and get them to buy from you. Now, Cocoa Krispies, Cocoa Puffs, they both have cocoa in them, but they taste different. They have different textures. They have different branding, right? The way they melt into the milk is different. And that's how it is with people, right? We're all different. So somebody else who teaches exactly what I teach might have a different spin on it. Well, they they definitely have a different spin on it. They have different techniques and insights. The basis is the same, but how we operate, how we present ourselves, how we work with people is different. And so you need to figure out what makes you different and allow your uniqueness, your personality to shine through because that is, again, what's going to attract people to you versus your competitor. If you are selling something in network marketing and it's the same product everybody else is selling, why should they buy from you instead of someone else? What makes you different? Why do they like you? And usually it comes down to your story, how you found that product, how you got into this business, You know, if you're creating your own courses and offers, it's your story. How did you gain this expertise? How did you get to this point? Your story is really, really powerful in getting people to trust you, to connect with you, to like you, to buy with you, buy from you, to want to work with you. But it's also how you brand yourself, how you show up online, how you market yourself and let yourself shine through. So just because someone is selling what you are selling or want to sell or want to create, it doesn't mean that the market is saturated. It actually means there's proof of demand. People out there want this. They're buying it from someone else. So that doesn't mean that you can't enter the marketplace and you can't sell it too. And that is the biggest misconception people have is, oh, there's so many people selling this. And again, it's that frequency illusion of now you're seeing all these people. But in reality, before this, you probably didn't even know anybody was selling this. Think of yourself a few years ago. 
And your audience doesn't know of all these other people. They don't know of your competitors. You're just starting to talk about whatever it is you're selling and creating. So they're just learning about it from you. So don't allow the fact that someone else is doing it hold you back. Instead of saying, oh, I can't because she is, instead it needs to be, oh, I can and I should because she is. Another thing people worry about is, oh, well, so-and-so is selling this. What if my audience goes and buys off her? But I want you to think about brand loyalty. There are some people who buy Frosted Flakes and they've been buying Frosted Flakes their entire lives, even though there are a million other options in that cereal aisle. Some people like what is familiar. They don't even consider or look for different options. Because they know that they love Frosted Flakes and they trust Tony the Tiger. So how can you be Tony the Tiger? Can you deliver a consistent quality experience so that anytime anyone buys anything from you, they know what to expect. They know that it's going to be so sugary and delicious. It's going to be quality. And then they keep coming back. They don't even look at other options. That is the mindset you want to get into is instead of worrying about your competitors, worry about how you can deliver a better experience that keeps people coming back. How many times have you bought a new cereal because it looked really good or it was new and it was really disappointing? You were super let down and you were like, yep, nope, I'm never buying that again. I'm going back to what I know and like and trust. That is the mentality that you have to have with your own offers and your own client experience. You do not want people to try you and be disappointed and then go back to what they know. If they are going to come to you, you want to then make them lifers. You don't want to disappoint them. But you also have to realize that if you deliver a quality experience and people do try a competitor, they might be let down. And then they might come back to you because they know that you deliver that quality and that sugary sweetness. So that all was lesson number one. Do not worry about market saturation or competition because competition is really proof of demand. Do not hold yourself back. Go ahead, forge forward, enter the marketplace and do it with pride and deliver an amazing experience. Lesson number two is characters and eye contact build trust. So Almost 10 years ago, they did a study. They went into grocery stores and they measured how high cereal boxes for adults were and how high off the ground cereal boxes for kids were. Obviously, they put the cereal boxes that are going to be attractive to kids lower at their eye level. So as they're walking, you know, they're looking at all these boxes and they're like, mom, mom, I want this. And then they put the cereals for adults at adult level. But beyond that, They look at the character on the box and where they are looking. So for adults, they make sure that the characters are making eye contact or looking a little bit up because adults are are taller. So that as an adult looks at the cereal, you know, shelf, the characters on those adult boxes are kind of looking straight at them or a little bit up to meet their eye level. For the children, the characters are looking a little bit down to their level and they found that the characters on the boxes making eye contact with the adults and with the children built more brand loyalty and brand trust and more connection. In fact, they did a study with Trix cereal. They had two cereal boxes and on one they had the Trix rabbit looking straight on making eye contact with whoever was looking at it and then on the other box they had the Trix rabbit looking down not making eye contact. Well, which one do you think people preferred? The one where the rabbit was actually making eye contact. People felt that that one built more trust and more connection. So I want you to look at this the next time you go into the grocery store and you walk down the cereal aisle. But what can we learn from this? In today's world, video marketing is so big. You literally cannot market in today's world on social media without being on video. So you have to, one, be your own character and you have to make eye contact. Meaning you cannot be hiding behind pictures of your product or your program 
or your offer. You cannot be making Canva slides that describe every single thing that is included and what they get and just be posting those. That does not build trust or connection. People need to see the face behind the brand. And again, you are the brand. You are the personal brand. People are buying from you. They're working with you. And they need to connect with you, not just mock-ups of your online course or your online offer or packets of whatever shake you're selling or shampoo bottles. Nobody is going to connect with that. You need to show your face and you need to show your eyes. You need to make eye contact with the camera and you need to be talking face to camera so that people can see you and hear you. They can see your mannerisms and it doesn't have to be perfect. I think this is so important. When I first started showing up online eight years ago, I just celebrated eight years in business. I thought I needed to be very professional and everything had to be perfect and I couldn't stumble over my words and you know the dogs couldn't be barking and that just wasn't working. It wasn't resonating with people. And when I finally just started to show up and, you know, somebody would ring the doorbell and the dogs would bark and it was how I reacted to that. And now with children, me showing up right now, I've been doing a lot of vlogs and showing a day in the life of a mompreneur, a mom of four, and people are loving them because they see the real life. They see the real me. They're connecting to me and how I handle situations. So As you're branding yourself, it doesn't have to be perfect. You do not have to show up as Chanel or some, you know, luxury brand. Just show up and show you. People are going to connect with that. You are the character on the box. So let people see you in your natural element, how you react to things. Let them see your personality and most importantly, your conviction. This is when you're selling something. So if you go into Canva, you create a bunch of slides that have text and images on them. Sure, people can read between the lines. You know, you have a brand voice in your writing. People can pick up on that. But your personality and your conviction are not in there. If you show up in your stories or you go live or you do a reel and you talk to the camera and you talk about your offer, your passion, your enthusiasm, your excitement, your belief, your conviction is going to come across so much more strongly than just canvas slides with text. People just reading text, usually they're going to skim it. They're going to skip over it versus hearing and seeing you talk about it. That's just, it's two different ballgames, two different worlds. So yes, I believe in just sharing Canva slides, just text. I typically will alternate when I'm selling. So one day I will share written text and slides and then the next day I'll talk to the camera. I, I switch it up. But on the days where I talk to the camera, I get so many more conversions, so many more clicks, so many more sales because people can see and hear and feel my passion and enthusiasm. I'm making eye contact with them. I'm building that trust. I'm building that connection. And then they want to take action versus just reading a bunch of text on the slides. So this was lesson two was be your character on the box and make eye contact. Show up, talk to the camera and build trust with your audience. And finally, lesson number three is to create variety in order to bring in more buyers. Think about Cheerios. They started out with just normal OG Cheerios. I literally just Googled how many varieties of Cheerios there are now. Guess how many there are? 19, 19 different types of Cheerios. Very berry, strawberry banana, frosted, pumpkin spice, chocolate peanut butter like I never even knew that existed but they didn't just stick with one variety they now have 19. Even Frosted Flakes I just looked it up Tony the Tiger has different flavors now and I talk about this with offer creation when I talk about the ascension ladder and developing your six-figure program suite. When you have just one offer to sell people come They buy it, they get a great experience, but then that's it. They have nothing else to buy from you. So you're constantly looking for new customers and new leads. But when you have different offers that people can work through and continue to serve them, then they keep coming back. They buy one thing and they get a great experience, right? This goes back to what I was talking about with lesson number one. People are lifers of Tony the Tiger. They love Frosted Flakes. They know it's going to be spot on every time. 
Now, Tony the Tiger has different flavors. So these people are like, ooh, I'm going to try these. Same with Cheerios. Why do you think they keep pumping out new flavors? If they were pumping out new flavors and not making money off of it, they would have stopped. They would have stuck with just plain old Cheerios. But they have 19 varieties because now they're bringing in all of these different people who have different taste preferences. And when these people have a good experience with one thing, with one flavor, they're more likely to then try the other flavors. And so this is how you maximize the lifetime value of each customer. They come to you, they buy something off of you, they have a great experience, and then they buy the next thing off of you, or they decide they want to buy one of these other offers off of you. So you don't have to constantly hunt for new leads. They are continuing to buy within your realm. They're staying in your world and buying all of the different flavors that you offer. When I am planning out my offers, I think of the customer journey of if I bring in a beginner and I teach them this through this offer and they master that, what are they going to be ready for next? What's the next step that they need to master to get to that next level? Okay, I'm going to create an offer at that level and at that price point. And then what is the thing they're going to need after that? And it's kind of the same in the cereal aisle, right? You go in the cereal aisle and you buy cereal for your kids or maybe for yourself. Um, So there's like the kids cereal and then there's the adult cereal. And then I'm going to go ahead and say the the senior citizen cereal that I I only know of senior citizens who eat certain brands of cereal. But there's those different levels for different stages of life. And so how can you have offers for different stages of business? Or if you're not a business coach, different stages of your customer journey, whether they're on a spiritual journey or a relationship journey or a weight loss journey, how can you map that journey out and provide different offers for each different season? Before I get into pricing, I do want to share that I'm hosting a brand new free training on how to create and sell a six-figure course in 2023. And I will also be talking about this Ascension Ladder and Program Suite in this free training. I'm going to break it all down for you and it is going to blow your mind. So if you've been thinking about creating an online course, some sort of online offer in 2023, you want to make it super profitable, but you kind of don't know where to start. Maybe you're pivoting or you're starting from scratch or you want to add a new stream of income because maybe, for example, you're a virtual assistant and you're like, I can't take on any more clients, but I want to bring in more money. A way to serve more people is through an online course. If you are a pelvic floor specialist, the way to reach more clients is through an online course because then you don't have to actually see them in your office. You can impact literally thousands of people at once by teaching them and having them go through your moves, your framework, your methodology on their own. And then you can provide any sort of level of support, which we can talk about in the free training. So the link to register is in the show notes, the description of this podcast. Go there, click on it, sign up. It is completely free. It is going to blow your mind. And we are going to set you up for success in 2023. If you like what I've been talking about, about having your own offers and lifetime value of a customer and continuing to have these lifers buy everything you sell, You have to start with the first thing, and I'm going to teach you how to do that in this free training. So sign up. It's going to be amazing, and I hope to see you there. But the last thing I want to talk about is pricing. There is quite a range of prices with cereals. Some are generic, obviously, so they're going to be cheaper. And then there's like the organic, (laughs) gluten-free, fancy, bougie cereals, which are ridiculously expensive, but people buy them. When I work with students and clients, they always want to undercharge, always. And they think by charging less, they're going to sell more, that people are going to be more attracted to it because it is cheaper. But what you have to remember is that not everybody wants cheap. Some people want to pay more because of price value bias. They, we naturally assume that if something costs more, it's going to be better. It's going to be of a higher and better quality. So when I go to the grocery store, I will, I will admit I don't buy the generic store brands. No offense to anybody who does. There are a lot of other things that I always buy generic store brand. And I will say, Walmart, great value brand. They have some amazing, amazing products that I like better than the name brand 
offers. However, when it comes to cereal, for some reason, I will never buy a a generic store brand cereal. I'm always going for the name brand. But there are other people who will go and they will only buy the store brand generic generic option. Then there's people like me who will buy, you know, Tony the Tiger, the standard ones. But then there are people who are searching and seeking out the like really healthy, expensive cereals. So there are different buyers who are going to be willing to buy at different price points and they're looking for different price points. So if you were trying to attract the bougie high level client or student and you are pricing your offer too low, they're not going to buy it because they're going to think it's cheap and not good and not good quality. And they're like, I'm looking for something better. Um, And if you are looking for the low, I'm not saying low quality. I don't want to say low quality, but the person who is looking for a lesser value because, and there's there's a place for lesser value, right? There are certain things that I buy that I'm like, I am not spending money on this expensive version. Like the store brand is just as good. It's all I need. I don't need it to be fancy. Like it serves its purpose. Boom, done. So for those seeking the lesser value or the lesser cost thing, they're not going to look for the more expensive option. My point is, Having different offers at different price points is key because some people are going to come in looking for more expensive, high ticket offers because they expect it to be a higher value and they want a bigger transformation. They want more proximity, all that kind of stuff. And some people just need a quick win. They just need like some quick help and they're going to want to invest in something that is a lower cost. So try to have various price points in your offer suite, that is important. And don't be afraid to have a range, just like the cereal aisle. There are cereals that are just a few dollars and then there's cereal that's like $10. And right, I just thought about this and I'm laughing. My friend only buys the generic store brand cereal. I only buy the mainstream, like traditional names. And my in-laws, they only buy the bougie, expensive, fancy, organic cereal. Like they only go to Whole Foods and buy that type of cereal and spend $10 a box on it. So right there, three people with very different purchasing habits. So as you're pricing your offers, think about the different levels of cereal, right? At the bottom is usually like the generic cheaper ones. And then on the middle, in the middle is like the normal cereals, the name brand cereals. And then on the top shelf, typically in the grocery stores that I go to are like the fancy expensive cereals. So think about having those different levels of prices for different people in your offer suite. The last thing I wanna say is do not cause analysis paralysis. Yes, it is important to have different offers at different price points to serve different people in their journey. But if you are presenting somebody with too many options, they are going to become overwhelmed and shut down. A confused audience takes no action. An overwhelmed audience takes no action. So you can have multiple offers, but I'm not telling you to constantly be shoving them in someone's face, being like, here are six different things you can buy, because then they're like, what? Where do I even start? What's the best one for me? I don't know. I need some time to think about it. And then they're researching and reading every detail and overthinking and over questioning, and then they don't do anything. So I have a ton of offers, but I do not promote them all at the same time. I do not make them all available at the same time. I do not have them all in my link tree or my link in bio. I am very selective with what I am presenting and promoting at any given time so that there isn't too much overwhelm. There isn't analysis paralysis. And that happens in the cereal aisle. You go in the cereal aisle and it's like, boom, so many colors and characters and options it's overwhelming. And you don't want to do that to your audience. You don't want to have them enter your world and be like, whoa, this is this is too much. I'm just going to walk away. Instead, you want to present them with what you think is most important at that time and whatever you are selling at that time. So resist the urge to overwhelm them like the cereal aisle if you have tons of offers. Okay, be intentional, be strategic. 
So there you have it. Again, don't forget to sign up for my free training. I'm going to walk you through a lot more. If you found this valuable, the free training is going to be 10 times more valuable and we're going to get into a lot more specifics for those of you who are looking to make more money at another stream of income, have passive income, get sales while you're sleeping or you know being with your children, all of those good things. I cannot stress this enough how life-changing online courses, online offers are. And you know, once you automate them, how incredible it is for your lifestyle, your freedom, your bank account, all those good things. So sign up for that free training. But to recap this episode, the three things we can learn from the cereal aisle. Number one, do not worry about market saturation or competition. It is proof of demand. Number two, be your own brand character and make eye contact with your audience. Talk to the camera, show your face, let your personality and your quirks shine through. That is how you're going to build the know, like, and trust factor, which leads to more sales. And then finally, create variety to bring in more buyers and to keep buyers coming back and buying all of the different things that you are offering, just like the 19 varieties of Cheerios. I hope that this was helpful. As always, I would love for you to take a screenshot of this episode and put it in your Instagram stories and tag me. I want to know that you are listening. I would love to hear what you thought of the episode. And most importantly, share this with a friend. If you gained anything from this episode, sharing is caring. Please share it with a friend, send it to them, put it in your stories and tell people to listen to it so that they can hear these messages too. I so appreciate every single one of you listening and I really hope that I am helping you to have some mindset shifts, to take more action, to be bolder, to be more confident and to most importantly, make more money so that you can create the freedom and the life that you deserve and desire. So get out there and make those money moves. 